Hey, before you guys grab a seat, I want to read today's scripture. As we get ready for next Sunday, next Sunday is National Back to Church Sunday. Hey, you're excited. I'm excited. Uh, we're going to be taking part with uh, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people that are going to hopefully be coming back to church. And as we get ready for that, and as we try to shake off kind of what's gone on in the spring and summer, everyone just kind of shake it with me a little bit. Just kind of shake it off. Shake, just do a Taylor Swift for me. Just shake, shake, shake it off. As we kind of shake all that off and get ready for the fall, uh, today I want to kind of prepare our, our hearts with a, a thought that might turn into a message. So, so this is basically what the thought is around. It's about being instantly hot, instantly hot, as opposed to being sometimes hot, as opposed to being hot for a little while and then not hot, instantly hot. Everyone say instantly hot with me. If you have a Bible with you, you want to follow along, we're going to be in Romans chapter 12. We're going to look at just two little verses, and again, this is a thought that may turn into the message, but I'll try to keep it from turning into one. Quick little thought today, two verses from Romans chapter 12, verses 11 and 12 say this. The Apostle Paul says, do not be lagging in diligence fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Let's pray, and then we'll, uh, we'll jump into this. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the chance to be in your house once again. I ask that you get me out of the way. I pray that you speak to us today clearly. May we walk out of this place changed. May we not leave here the same way as we came in. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. all right, you guys can grab a seat. So the Apostle Paul writes these verses in Romans chapter 12. This is about 20 years, about 20 years after Jesus' life, death, and, and resurrection. And in, in my Bible, it was given later, it was given the title of Behave Like a Christian. I, I like that. Behave like a Christian. And I want to be clear about this. This is not the Apostle Paul saying, this is how you become a Christian. This is the Apostle Paul saying, behave like one if you already what? If you already are one. This is how you should uh, behave. And I always think that's an important distinction to make because one of the things I love about our church is that we have people here all the time that do not yet believe, but they want a place they can belong. And I love that about our church, that we have a place that, that, that people can belong before they believe. There is no code that we make everyone believe exactly the way we believe before they can come in and be a part of our church. It's, it's like, no, you just, just come and you can belong before you believe. I love that about our church, but I want to be clear about what Paul's saying here. He's not saying this is how you become a Christian. He's saying this is after you have given your heart to Jesus, this is how you should, what, this is how you should behave. So this is what he says again in verse 11. He says, not lagging in diligence. Diligence really here, it could be translated as zeal. So not lagging in, in zeal, don't be lagging in zeal, but instead fervent in spirit fervent in spirit. Basically, the Apostle Paul says the same thing twice here. He says the same thing twice. The Bible is kind of like your mama. Whenever your mama said something twice, what did she, she meant it, right? When your mama said something to you twice, and, and when she said your middle name, you, you knew, right? You knew it was about to get serious up in here. So, so this is the Apostle Paul saying it twice and saying your middle name, okay? That's what, what he's saying here. He's basically saying, don't lack and be in zeal, be zealous. Don't lack in zeal, be zealous. Don't lack in zeal, be zealous. As followers of Jesus, that's how we should serve God. If you are a follower of Jesus today, you should be fervent in spirit. And now I read that this week, fervent in spirit, and I'm like, that sounds really like, yeah, fervent in, what the heck does that mean? Come on, come on, come on, somebody, anyone, we got any English majors in here? Fervent, in, like, I was like, seriously, like, I'm, I went and I looked the word up, and this is what the dictionary says about fervent. It says, intensely passionate, hot or glowing, from the Latin, oh, here we go, I've got a Latin lesson today, from the Latin word fervens, which means what? Boiling. Boiling. That as a, a follower of Jesus, we shouldn't be just a little bit passionate. No, we should be a lot passionate. As a follower of Jesus, we shouldn't be just a little hot. We should be hot to the point of glowing. And then again, the Latin lesson, which means what? It means hot to the point of, of boiling. That as a follower of Jesus, it should be active, it should be engaging, that, that, that we should be all fired up in this place. This isn't like coming to church and being like, meh. No, this is about like, yeah, praise hands emoji, right? Like, that, like that's, that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about here. Not just a little bit enthusiastic, but a lot enthusiastic. Not just a little bit energized, but a lot enthousi uh, energized and, and enthusiastic. Now, now, when you talk about stuff boiling, we have a couple different ways to do that. Right? There's, there's one way to boil something, and that is with... 
this was one of these. Now, now, if you want to boil something in one of these, you, you, you take the lid off of it, you pour your water inside, then you put the, the lid back on it, you put it on your stove, and then you go and get your coffee mug and come back a month later. Because this literally is the slowest thing on the, like, you think like, like sloths are slow and, and slugs. No, no, no. Boiling water is the slowest thing on the face of the planet. So you, you put your water in here, you put it on to boil, and then you come back like a week later. Come on, be honest. How many of you have put water in one of these and put it on the stove and then forgot about it because it took so long until you came back, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And you came back. Why? Because it makes a noise when it's ready, when it's finally decided, oh, I'm finally hot now. When, when it finally gets good and ready to be hot, it lets off a noise. It sounds like a soul leaving a dead body. Amen. It lets off this shriek that lets you know, oh, now it's time for a relaxing cup of tea, right? So, so that's, that's, that's one way to, to boil water. But if you want to move out of the Stone Age into something more modern, <coughs> all right, so this right here is an electric hot water dispenser with instant boiler. Yes, yes, I'm about to blow your minds, okay? So, so I'm not, I'm not a, a coffee drinker in here. I just, I never grew up past middle school. I don't know. Ask my wife, my humor, middle school. So I've got my hot chocolate with marshmallows. Yes. Now, I, I was going to serve some of these, but you know, COVID, so. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so, so, so what this is, is you put the water in the tank back here, and then you, you set the settings right here. You hold this button down for just a second here, and 212 degrees, you set the amount, and then you hit the start button. And within five seconds, five, four, three, two, less than five seconds, you have boiling hot water. Now... Now, that, that didn't even come near to fill my mouth. So let, let, let's back it down a little bit because I don't want to burn my mouth. Yeah, thank you for beeping that you gave us hot water. You're amazing. Okay. So let's, uh, let's back this down to uh, what would be a good temperature here? Let's say maybe one, 180. Yeah, let's do 180, all right? And let's up the amount a little bit. We'll hit start. And then on demand, again, oh, like not, not even. Now, I wish you guys could see the steam coming out of this. Can you see the steam? You see it? instant hot water. It's amazing, right? Welcome. This is like the Jetsons or something here. All right, so it's eventually going to stop here, and I'll get a chance to sip my, uh, come on. Come on, come on, stop, stop, stop. I'm regretting how much water I had requested now. I'm starting to get nervous. Any time now. Okay. And we're going to hit stop. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Stop. <laughs> All right. So now, you just stir it up a little bit here. This is going to be way too hot to drink right now, so I'm just going to let this steep here for a second. Do you really let hot chocolate steep? Probably not, but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to let my hot chocolate kind of steep here for a second, and then, uh, and then we'll come back to that in a second. Oh, I've got to get the Church of the Sun Coast logo facing the front there. There we go. There we go. And look at the steam coming off. Oh, that's, that's nice, right? All right, so here's the Apostle Paul, and he's telling us to be fervent in spirit, to never be lacking in zeal, to be instantly hot. Here's, here's just the way I look at things. I don't think this is what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Like, I, I, he couldn't look into the future and see something crazy like this. Tea lovers, I'll get you the information if you want one. But, but I don't think he could look into the future and see this, but I don't think this is what he had in mind when he was talking about being instantly hot, being never lacking in zeal, being fervent in spirit. This right here reminds me of the person that maybe the moment they gave their life to Jesus, they got a little bit excited. Got a little passionate one day at church, and, and yeah, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. This is the person that maybe went to some kind of Christian conference or went to some kind of Bible study one time and got all excited. This is the person that keeps talking about that Promise Keepers rally back in 97. Oh, it was so amazing. Yeah, God was there. Yeah. 
This is the, the, the person that has the camp experience. You know, you go away to summer camp and you throw your stick in the fire and get all excited about Jesus. And, and then you come home and you're going to burn all your CDs, your secular CDs, and you're going to change the world for Jesus. And that lasts all of, what, three days? This is the person that may be about the third song into it, finally starts to feel a little bit of something. This is the person that's into it as long as I'm talking about something that they want me to talk about. When Pastor Brian's talking about money, oh, this is not my word, Pastor. Sorry. <laughs> this is the person that comes on Christmas and Easter and talk about how amazing it is and they can't wait to come back and then they don't show up again until the next Christmas or, or, or Easter. Okay, when the Apostle Paul was talking about being fervent in spirit, always being ready when the need arises to be able to share someone the, the hope that you have within you about Jesus or to serve someone... I don't think this is what he was talking about. Someone that can get hot, but it has to be on their terms. See, what I think the Apostle Paul was talking about was something like this, where you can just instantly, mm, at the touch of a button, you can have hot water on demand. Amen? That's pretty good, actually. But this, this is the picture that when the need arises, when someone in your life needs to have Jesus shared with them, when, when someone in your life needs some kind of service from you, when, when someone around you is like going through like the worst time of their life and you know like inside of you like, I should pray for them, I should pray for them, and inside you're like, but I can't do that, right? No, 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 this is about being instantly hot, always having something on demand, water in the tank, ready to go whenever the need arises. And I know some of you are sitting here this morning, and you're thinking to yourself, you know what, Pastor Brian, I hear you talking about, you know, fervent in spirit and full of zeal and all that kind of stuff. And you know what, I sit by some of those people on Sunday mornings, and they're so annoying, <laughs> right? <laughs> it takes me three cups of coffee to even have my eyes open. There's just two, two types of people in the world. There's tiggers and poo bears, and I'm glad there's tiggers in the world, but I'm not a tigger, okay? And, but what I hope you hear, I hear what you're saying, that not everyone is just, you know, outwardly, expressive. Okay, I, I get that. But what I hope you walk away today knowing is this, is that this is not about a personality type, but about a type of obedience. Being fired up, being instantly hot, it's not about a personality type, a more passionate kind of person. It, it's about a decision you make. It's not a disposition, it's a decision. Why? Because zeal matters. Passion matters. We want to be intentionally intense. Intentionally intense. We're trying to create a church culture here. We're trying to follow Jesus and what he wants and have a church culture here that is full of life and excitement and, and, and energy, something that would be attractive to people that, that are far from God. They walk in, they're like, wow, this is crazy. Why are these people so excited? Are they, is this a cult? I don't know. Like, like we, we want there to be that enthusiasm and that excitement that's attractive to people. If you want an example of what I'm talking about, take a group of tweens to a Taylor Swift concert, okay? If you want a picture of what I'm talking about, you take a group of tweens to a, a, a Taylor Swift concert, and I promise you, no 11, 12, 13-year-old girl at a Taylor Swift concert, we can question whether they should even be there in the first place, I don't know, whatever. You can make that decision as your parent. But, but you go and watch a tween at a Taylor Swift concert, and they are not just kind of there. They're not just like, oh, this is so good, oh yeah. <laughs> Should be scrolling, scrolling. No. <laughs> That's my middle school girl. I don't know. That's, 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 I channeled my, in, my inner middle school girl there for a second. Um, whatever. I, I, no, no, they are into it. They know all the lyrics to the songs. They, they love her cat. They know everything about her cat. Okay, that's a picture of what Jeremiah 29, 13 says. God says to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with some of your heart, a, a little bit of your heart, all of your heart. When you care about something with all of your heart, you talk about it, you sing about it, you spend your money on it, you get excited about it, and you're not embarrassed to raise your hands and get excited, right? And, and listen, I, I'm not saying that you can't get excited about football. Thank God football's back. <laughs> praise God in heaven, there is some football back on TV. We can, we can praise him for that. I'm not saying you can't get excited about football. I'm not saying you can't get excited about fishing or golf or whatever it is. Whatever gets women excited, I don't know if it's shopping, I, sorry. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, like, like, whatever gets you excited, that's fine, but let's be just as passionate about the things that have eternal value. Are you with me? Let's be just as passionate about those things. Zeal matters, passion matters. And I'm not talking about hype, I'm talking about hope. 
I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, coming and dying on the cross for our sins and our response back to Him. I'm talking about the God who was worthy, the, the, the God who loves us that much, that was willing to do all that, and responding for what He has done for us with that level of energy and excitement. That's what I'm talking about. The great evangelist John Wesley, he famously had a quote. People would ask him, why do these people come from miles around to come and hear you preach? Why do people come from miles and miles? This is, they didn't have cars yet, okay? This, why do people come from miles and miles around to come and, and, and hear you preach? And he famously said, I light myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. People are attracted to enthusiasm. People are attracted to passion. People are attracted to excitement. You don't want to see someone on Shark Tank going, it's just all right. You can probably build a better one. I'm only building it because my parents always built these. No, no, you, you want to see the person on Shark Tank that's invested. It's like, this is the best one ever. This is going to change the world because people are attracted to passion, to enthusiasm. It has nothing to do with personality. It's a decision that we make on the inside to be fervent in spirit. It's not a Myers-Briggs thing. It's a decision that you and I make. Here's what I'm talking about. If you're taking notes today, write this one down. A fire that you're ignoring will never be roaring. A fire that you're ignoring will never be roaring. If you wonder why some people are instantly excited, why some people, yeah, sure, there's just some kind of personality that goes with that probably, but, but do you wonder what that is? It's because they've been tending to the fire, right? What I'm talking about is not just an excitement on the outside that we can come in and be all hands in the air like we just don't care. I'm not, not necessarily talking about that. But it's like an iceberg. The, the, the part that people see is just a, a small percentage of what's actually below the, the, the surface. Today isn't about trying to get you all excited. Today is about tending to your soul and fanning the flames inside of your soul. The stuff that nobody else sees, but it comes out in your speech. It comes out in the way you interact with people. It comes out in your passion. It comes out in your strength. Of a, a fire that you're ignoring can never be roaring. So how do we make sure that, that this is who we are and this is not who we are? How do we make sure that we always have something in the tank, something ready to go? Well, the Apostle Paul in verse 12 gives us the answer. 11 is what we're after, right? We're after verse 11, but verse 12 gives us the answer. Again, verse 11, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, again, zeal and zeal, serving the Lord. And then here's verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, come on, and continuing steadfastly in prayer. This is what it's going to take. And when life hurts the most, this is when we need these things even more. Because I don't know if you notice this or not, but two of these have to do with adversity. Paul says rejoicing in hope. When do you rejoice in hope? It's when you're going through it. He says patient in tribulation, patient when things are going bad, steadfast in prayer. Listen to me, my point is, is simply this. The stuff that you do behind closed doors that no one ever sees is what's going to lead to the stuff that everybody else sees. That private prayer leads to public power. That's what the Apostle Paul is talking about here. It's just like in cooking. It's all about the prep work. You watch these cooking shows and it's like, in 30 minutes I made this entire delicious meal. No, you didn't. You had an entire team of people that cut everything up and laid everything out, and you've already got one done inside the oven, honey. I, like, this is, we're not fooled by this. It's all about the what? The prep work, the prep work. It's all about the prep work. What are you and I doing inside of our souls during the week? What are we doing inside of our souls to fan the flames, the, the, to make the prep work possible? You want to have the, the instant hotness as a manager, as a boss, as an employee. You want to have the instant hotness as a teacher. You want to have the instant hotness as a mom, as a dad. The only way you get the instant hotness is if you've been fanning stuff into flame all throughout the week. What are you doing to fan the flames inside your soul? And here's the last thing, and we'll wrap this up. Worship team, you can come back up and help me close this down. I told you to be quick today. We will be defeated if we come in depleted. We will be defeated if we come in depleted. If you have not been fanning stuff into flame all throughout the week, if you try to show up on your job, if you try to show up here and preach a message, if you try to show up as a mom or dad and you haven't been, what, putting in the work, you're going to be depleted and you're going to be defeated. This, this pot right here is on. It doesn't wait for me to hit this button to make the hot water. 
See, it's got a tank back here, and inside this tank, it's got a little, little element in there that warms it to a certain level. It doesn't warm it up all the way, but it, it, it gets it going. It gets it warmed up, so that all I have to do is hit this button right here, and it, 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 it boils it over. Be- because this is how so many of us deal with things. We, we're the, 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 the kettle Christian, right? Oh, oh, somebody needs prayer. Okay, let me, let me get my, my kettle. Okay, I got my kettle. Uh, I need some water. Oh, someone needs me to help serve them? Oh, but I'm so busy, and I don't know how I have the strength. Okay, okay let, me, let, me, let me get some water. Okay, I got some water. And, and then, uh, oh, someone, oh, oh, you want me to talk about Jesus with you? Oh, okay, um, uh, let, me, let, me, let me heat this up first, and, and then I can talk to you. No, 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 no. We need to have something in the tank, right? We need to have something that's ready to go, something that at a moment's notice you can hit the button, fervent in spirit, always instantly hot. What are you and I doing to our souls during the week? What are we doing to fan the flames throughout the week? Warren Wearsby, who's my favorite Bible commentator, if you would like to learn more about the Bible, go get some of Warren Wearsby's B series, B-E. He wrote one for every book of the Bible, and every book of the Bible is be something, like be courageous, be brave, be forgiving, be whatever. But he has this quote that I absolutely love. I just cut my finger on this stupid kettle. It feels good. Taking it back to Walmart. But this is what Warren Wiersbe says. He says, when life becomes difficult, you cannot allow your zeal to grow cold. And listen to me this morning. We have gone through a season of hardship this year. We, we have gone through some stuff this year that your natural instinct is to gonna want to be to to back away. Your natural instinct is gonna oh, oh oh okay 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 okay. Now now some of you in here you you run harder and you run faster into God into Jesus. But I know for some of us in here our natural inclination is just to kind of whoa okay I'm just gonna kind of detach from all this. This is crazy. I don't know. But what I hope you hear today is that when you go through times like this that we've gone through this year, this is not the time to to have a little bit of heat. This is the time to have a lot of heat. You don't put in the same amount of energy in the difficult times as you do in the good times. And in the good times, the kettle's probably fine. But in the difficult times, you need something in the tank. You need something there, something ready to go. You've got to put more energy into it in the difficult times than you do in the good times. So my challenge as we go into next Sunday, my challenge for our church this fall, as we go through still the craziness of this world and everything going on, my challenge is that we would not be a thermometer, but be a thermostat. A, a thermometer simply gives you a reading. We, we check the kids' temperatures before they go into the kids' area. We put a little little gun to their head. It's creepy, right? Put a little gun to their head and, 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 and beep. Okay, there's our readout. Okay, you're good. You can go in. But all that does is it gives us a readout. It gives us their temperature. That's the person that comes into church and is like, man, attendance was a little thin today. The band was a little flat today. Pastor Brian's jokes weren't as good as they usually are. That volunteer team looked a little thin today. No, 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 no. No, you don't be a thermometer. You be a thermostat. You know what a thermostat does? A thermostat regulates the temperature of an environment. When things are a little bit chilly, a thermostat kicks on the heat. You be someone that brings the heat, okay? You be someone that comes in and changes the atmosphere of this place. You be someone that changes the environment. You you, you pray a little harder. You sing a little louder. You be even more passionate. You take even more notes than usual. You give more. You serve more. You invite more. I love the way that Eugene Peterson translates 1 Peter 3. He says it this way in the message. He says, If with heart and soul you're doing good, do you think you can be stopped? Even if you suffer for it, you'll still be better off. Don't give the opposition a second thought through thick and thin, through thick and thin. That's this year, through thick and thin. Keep your hearts at attention in adoration before Christ your master. And help me out. What did he say? He says, be ready, be ready, be ready. I want to say be ready. Be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you're living. Be ready. Get ready. Get ready to be ready. That through thick and thin, to always be instantly hot, to never be lacking in zeal, to always have something in the tank ready to go whenever the need arises. Let's stand this morning in the works of Jesus one more time.